he is mainly known as the first Christian historian. But for our purposes here is that we'll be primarily pulling from his proof of the gospel work in Book 8, Chapter 2. Eusebius starts off stating or citing verses 24 through 27. You can see here that there is nothing too significant in this version that he is using. And looking at verse 25 is that it looks pretty clean too. He says Christ the Prince for the Mashiach Nagid, but we won't make anything of that until he covers it himself. Now his verse 26. And after the 62 weeks, the anointing shall be destroyed, and there is no judgment in him. And he shall destroy the city and the sanctuary together with the coming prince. They shall be cut off in a flood, and to the end of the war, which is rapidly completed in desolations. Now I'm sure an eyebrow went up with this one. Comparatively, you can already see some deviation on the part of Eusebius or the version that he is using here. The city and temple destruction reads in Eusebius's version as though there are two characters that together do the destruction and add that they shall be cut off in a flood, alluding to their death potentially. Needless to say, you can suspect Eusebius has an entirely unique scheme of his own working here. His verse 27 now. And one week shall establish the covenant with many. And in the midst of the week, my sacrifice and drink offering shall be taken away. And on the temple shall be an abomination of desolations. And at the end of time shall an end be, be put to the desolation. Again, you can see some subtle changes in Eusebius' version that reorients one's thinking of who is doing what in these specific verses. The he character is completely gone in his verse 27. So just expect the unexpected as he now attempts to prove his view. So he says the following. It is quite clear that 7 times 70 weeks reckons in years amounts to 490. That was therefore the period determined for Daniel's people which limited the total length of the Jewish nation's existence. And he no longer calls them here God's people, but Daniel's, saying, Thy people. Him saying that the prophecy limited the length of the Jewish nation's existence probably already has you thinking about the 70 AD destruction. But let's let him keep explaining himself. So then, he first defines the length of time determined for the people, and then for the city. And it seemed to be the period from the restoration of Jerusalem, which was in the reign of Darius, king of Persia, until the reign of Augustus, emperor of Rome, and of Herod the foreign king of the Jews, in whose times our Savior's birth is recorded, as the prophecy goes on to show, and he adds next. So, Eusebius is start, starting his system in Darius the Great's reign and is saying that Emperor Augustus and Herod the Great are part of the prophecy. So, we already do have a new view in our hands here. He goes on stating that Jesus was anointed as the most holy and references the high priest being anointed with the holy anointing oil, but in regards to the Kadesh Kadesh, he admits the following. But as I find nowhere in the Holy Scriptures the high priest called most holy, I am of the opinion that in this passage only the only begotten word of God is meant who is properly and truly worthy of that name. So, he knows there are no references to the high priest ever being called most holy, which means that he would not agree with the translation of the NASB and others that have Aaron being referred to this way, leaving all of the examples in the Old Testament to be referring to the temple and its worship objects. He continues, 
or sorry, he continues saying that the 70 weeks were completed during Jesus' time and even acknowledges Africanus' work on the subject and then goes on saying, and if I make, if I may make an apposite comment myself on the passage, I would say that the prophecy does not make the division of the 70 weeks without an object or haphazard. For having divided them into the first seven and another 62, it adds the last one after a quantity of intermediate matter and thus determines the number of 70 weeks. So, Eusebius explicitly says that there is a gap of time between the end of the 69th week and the start of the 70th week, but their sum is still 70, and that makes it a legitimate stance. And now he begins attaching his scheme to historical events. He says, And the weeks of years makes 483 years added together from the reign of Cyrus up to the Roman Empire, when Pompeius the Roman general attacked Jerusalem and took the city by siege. Now, from this, you see that Eusebius was working with weeks of years and places the first 69 weeks between Cyrus and General Pompey's siege of Jerusalem. Pompey's siege of Jerusalem ended in 63 BC that ended Judah's small period of independence that led to the decline of the Hasmonean dynasty that gave way to the Herodian dynasty with Herod the Great's dad, Antipater, taking control in 47 BC. That painting there is portraying Pompey and his army entering the Holy of Holies in the temple. The notable fact there is that it did desecrate the temple, but he, Pompey, ordered it to be ritually cleaned immediately so the temple priests could resume their normal function like a day or two after. So this shouldn't be ever claimed as the abomination of desolation in Daniel. Now, Adding the 483 years onto 63 BC is that you get 4, 446, or excuse me, 546 BC, which technically does fall within the reign of Cyrus over Persia, but still seven years before the fall of Babylon in 539 BC. But before we add more on to this view, is that you might have caught that Eusebius switched off from his earlier statement about the 70 weeks, starting with Darius the Great to the time of where Augustus and Herod were both ruling together. Which means that Eusebius proposed two systems within the same chapter. And he confirms this after you read ahead through, sorry, <laughs> all of the his explanation for Cyrus to Pompey's siege of Jerusalem in 63 BC and very little about Herod the Great and in the Hasmonean line completely. The comical thing here is that he reiterates his Cyrus to Pompey system right before saying that you can reckon another way from Darius and the completion of the temple to Augustus and Herod. So his second system would look like this now. What's interesting with this system of his is that he sinks the 66th Olympiad with the second year of Darius, which makes it 512 BC in his view, as 776 is held as the starting point of the ancient Olympics. And this is where Eusebius says something really odd. He remarks how 121 Olympiads from Darius' second year is 484 years. That is Augustus's 15th year, and that this year is the year that Jesus was born on as it landed at the end of the 69 weeks. But adding 484 to 512 is that it lands you on 28 BC for Jesus' birth at the same time of Augustus' soul reign over the empire. Now, you might think, okay, but maybe Eusebius just didn't know his Olympiads that well or something. Uh, no. Remember, he is known most for being a historian and knew his Olympiads really well because in his Chronicon is that he sinks Tiberius' 15th year with the beginning of Jesus' ministry in the fourth year of the 201st Olympiad that is a 15-year Olympiad 
resulting in nearly a 60 year span between these two, which doesn't fly because the 15th year of Tiberius pulled from Luke 3, 1 and 23 states that Jesus was about 30 at the time and simply rewinding the clock from here puts you around 3 or 2 BC for Jesus' birth. And what makes me really speculate that he knew what he was doing here in a 70 week scheme is that he states that there were 548 years from Darius's second year to the 15th year of Tiberius, which is extremely accurate according to, or reconciling this with modern chronology and dates the 70 AD destruction correctly with it being 42 years later from the 15th year of Tiberius. So he does know his history pretty well. But what really tips me off here is that in Jerome's Chronicon, where he translated Eusebius's work into Latin, is that he said Eusebius dated Jesus' birth in the third year of the 194th Olympiad, which is a 29 year difference that puts his birth back into a more normal year of 2 BC, not 28 BC. So you have him promoting two possible schemes that are both filled with historical errors, even by his own accounts, which only leaves us now with trying to figure out where he blotted the 70th week in his scheme. He says, and afterwards comes the one remaining week, separated from them and divided by a long interval, during which occurred all the other events that are predicted in between, all of which being foretold in the middle of the oracle were fulfilled. So he reiterates that there is a gap between the 69th and 70th week, and that the events in the gap are spelled out in the middle of the oracle that refers to verse 26. What we can note here is that Eusebius did not see the Mashiach in verse 26 predicting the Messiah or Jesus' death, but to the cutting off of the legitimate high priesthood line and their role of anointing that was he was possibly alluding to earlier by saying that Herod the Great took out John Hyrcanus II that ended the order of the Mosaic high priesthood in 40 BC. But that would then come before the end of his 69th week system. Regardless, he says that 926 gap of events was fulfilled during the time where Augustus and Herod were ruling simultaneously, and the destruction of the city and temple were metaphorically destroyed because it simply did not happen during their time, especially since we know that Herod was known for his building projects including the huge expansion of the second temple. So Eusebius finishes his system saying, one week of years therefore would be represented by the whole period of his association with the apostles, both the time before his passage, passion and the time after his resurrection. So he is saying that the 70th week is about Jesus with his crucifixion and the resurrection occurring in the middle of the week. How did he get or reconcile the three and a half years after the cross? He doesn't explain that portion, which then, you know, you and I can only assume that he concludes it this way in order to make sure Jesus was in the prophecy somewhere, thus keeping the prophecy messianic in his view. So here's what Eusebius's 70 week systems finally look like. Now before moving on from Eusebius, I think it's always beneficial for us to see what other views that these early writers had on Daniel, namely in chapters 2 and 7 with the four empires, because modern day writers tend to only note points of agreement with them from their viewpoints. So it's good to know the full picture of these ancient writers before someone portrays it in a certain way. Eusebius connected Jesus with the divine son of man figure from Daniel 7.13 and flat out calls him God, along with other key titles that we've discussed before in our study in videos that connected descriptions together of the second Yahweh figure that appears throughout the Old Testament who becomes incarnate in the New Testament.
Eusebius continues to explain that there are two comings of Christ and that the second coming is described in Daniel by referencing Daniel 7 verses 9 and 13 and 14. Thus, he would see these prophecies unfulfilled. What's interesting is that before his 70 weeks discussion is that he talks about why the Old Testament prophecies didn't name the Romans directly. He says it was because they would be the empire under which the gospel would be proclaimed and it prevented offense from being taken, most notably in the visions of Daniel. This can only be referring to the fourth empire of Daniel 2 and 7 as described in the 15th book of the proof of the gospel of his and where only a frag frag fragment has been found and translated back in 1825 but thankfully it is his interpretation of the statute in the four beasts and lists them as the Assyrians, Persians, Greeks, and Romans. Just note here that he was not skipping over the Babylonians. He was just referring to them and Nebuchadnezzar as Assyrian. And also that the four beasts run parallel with the statue as well. How did he see the final play out uh, with the ten toes and the eleventh little horn at the end? Can't say as this ends what we have available to us. But still Eusebius would see this as a future event at Christ's second coming. Reminder, hit the subscribe button below, turn on the notification bell, hit the like button, leave a comment, and don't forget to visit us at JustScripture.org. But in the meantime, stay salty.